Figure out the angle? Okay, I think when you do all this, you're going to get a triangle that looks something like as follows. Um, this plus this equals that. So if I draw that out as a little vector triangle, I hope, I think your vector triangle looks like this. Come here, pen. That plus this gives you the resultant. Uh, what are the numbers here? Uh, this is going to be 1.5 mass times velocity. This is 108. And this is going to be 1.5 times 43. 64.5. Yes? Uh, angle, you found that that angle right there is 55 degrees, so you said this one here is uh, 125 degrees, and here is the uh, final momentum of object 2. So far, so good. Um, then you did the cosine law. I'm, this is, I, I've told you guys several times, I don't take shortcuts on this, and normally I wouldn't, but because we're pressed for time, I'm going to show no work. I'm going to go, the cosine law is going to be 64.5 squared plus 108 squared minus 64.5 squared. Sorry, try that again. Minus 2 times 64.5. That was totally wrong for a second there. Times 108 times the cos of 125 square root of that. You got the final momentum of 154.322. And then you said, I need to divide that by the mass, which I think was 8.3. So you got a speed of 18.6. Woo! V equals 18.6, which to two sig figs is 19 meters per second. At, okay, what about the theta? Well, I glanced at the answer and I said, they went south of east. I think the angle that they found was this one right here, which I think is also this one right here if I do my little Z trick. Yeah. Oh, so you did that too? Yeah. Okay, maybe the angle is wrong. I was doing this in a hurry. Uh, so the angle is going to be sine of mystery angle divided by what's across from it equals the sine of the angle that I know divided by what's across from it, which was 154.322, 154.322. Well, if you've done all this, then I'm inclined to believe maybe it's my mistake. 64.5 times the sine of 125 divided by 154.322. Square root. <coughs> Sorry, not square root, Mr. Duick. Something was bugging. I paused. My, my, my subconscious said, hey, you screwed up. But I still hadn't seen it yet. But I, I know I started to write, and my mind told my pen, stop writing. Uh, I, I'm getting 20 degrees. I did everything. 20 degrees, and that's south of east. I'm guessing a calculator glitch, probably. Whew. Hey, I did that one right, at least. Thank goodness. I didn't, and again, for those of you who were following, I didn't show all my steps there. I took a lot of cutting corners. I'll be honest, Manisha, I'm not even sure, because you, you, you've had me long enough to know, I say cut corners in homework, show all your work on tests. This is one time I might not even cut corners in my homework. I even feel almost like washing my hands after cutting my corners, showing you guys this solution key. I really, ugh, so much room to make dumb mistakes. I would never have done it this fast normally, but press for time. Any others? Yep. Can you go over number one? I go, yeah. Okay. Um, let's go like this, Mr. Duick. Let's do number one down here. And let's go find a copy of it. Because I'm gonna I didn't leave you enough room to show the work up there. And I feel so yucky already taking cutting corners on that last one. I don't want to do it again. Less than 6.5, more two-dimensional momentum. I stole this, I think, from the 2010 provincial, the very last provincial that they gave. 
Uh, the big ultimate reviews, I made those, I think, in 2006. So any provincials after that never made it on there. So that's where I can still get a few extra nice, pretty graphics questions. Although this one had no graphics. Going to open? Okay, there we go. Number one. Um, I was saying to somebody earlier today, probably on your test, if I'm giving you a momentum question with angles, I will give you a picture, not ask you to draw it straight out. In particular, this one is pretty tricky. Uh, if, if I get you to the point of the triangle, Michael, do you think you'll be okay? Yeah. I figured that's, for, for many of you, the tricky part. Hopefully, you're getting the hang of the cosine yeah. sine law stuff. Okay. Hey, there's a collision. The sum of all momentum initially equals sum of all momentum final. Before the collision, what's moving? The truck, the car, or both? The truck. After the collision, what's moving? So we would have this. Momentum of the truck initial. Wham, they collide. Equals momentum of the truck final plus momentum of the car final. Are there angles? Yeah. Okay. Dull. This is pretty tricky. For me to draw the initial truck, I said, well, it says south of east. So there's east. There's 25 degrees south of east. And it's whatever, 3,600 times 16, 3,600 times 16 is. It's 57,600. Wham, they collide. They didn't tell me anything about the final truck. Okay, I'll put a question mark there. Uh, thankfully, this one is kind of nice. It's due east, and it's mass times velocity. It's 2,600 times 12. Okay, it's 31,200. I said, well, apparently, when I add these two together, I'm supposed to get that. You know what? I'll draw this one first because it's the easiest. And then I'll see if I can reason out what the mystery one has to look like. So they gave me this. They said, OK. Now remember, I want a resultant to look like that. And the resultant is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. You know what? I'm kind of thinking that the truck either looks like this or the truck looks like it either goes down and to the left or down and to the right. I'm not sure. I'm going to take an educated guess and go with down to the right, but that's purely because I'm visualizing the actual collision. It seems to me if we were looking down from a map, if this is the car, it seems to me that if the, uh, truck came, if the truck bounces off this way, it seems to me it was probably coming in like this, and that's what might cause the car to go up due east. May I, maybe? It seems to me there's a sideways component of momentum to the right, and I don't know if all of that would get transferred to the car. Certainly, I'm not sure it would end, the truck would end up somehow bouncing to the left. You okay with my, my argument there? So I would probably do something like this. I would say, I'm thinking the final momentum of the truck is probably something like this. And that's what can give me the 57,600 with an angle of 25 degrees. Now, there's another way to do that. See, the reason this is difficult is in most of the questions, you've had two vectors to add together. Here, what I'm trying to find is this. What I could have done, I could have said, hey, let's get that circled thing by itself. I think that circled thing, the final momentum of the truck, is going to be the initial momentum of the truck take away the final momentum of the car. I could have just minus this to that side except they're vectors, I don't really minus vectors. You know what I do instead? I add the opposite. And I could draw this. If I drew this as a red triangle, tip to tail, it would look like this. We would say we have 
57,600 at an angle of 25 degrees, plus the opposite of the car, instead of 31,200 to the east, 31,200 to the west, and now I can draw the resultant. That should be the truck final. And I'm noticing that both of these look really, really similar in terms of their angle and picture. The scale is crap, but so either of those approaches would be fair game. And again, this is a pretty tough question. This is tougher than probably you'll see on the test. Is that all right? Yeah. Which method's better? I'm pretty good at visualizing these triangles, so I tend to not actually do the subtraction. I tend to just say, well, I'll add them tip to tail. What must that tail have been so that I can get the resultant? So I probably would have used the black triangle method. But if it's a really yucky diagram and I can't vi visualize it, there's my fallback. Well, I can still subtract. It means subtracting vectors, which is not my strong suit, but let's add the opposite. OK, just be really, really careful. Any others? So in terms of our, finish this, in terms of our schedule, uh, today is going to be questions involving momentum and energy. Nice review of everything. And then we got one more lesson kind of looking at a few weird examples, and we're done the unit. So probably on Friday, when I see you folks next, you can expect another take-home quiz with nothing but momentum at angles collisions and angles, all the good stuff, coast law, sine law. Oh, you know what? Probably there'll be one Sokotoa nice right angle accent. It's just those are really contrived. Most collisions don't form nice right angles with each other. And then uh, I'm leaning towards your test being towards the end of next week. Uh, there's air show and a few other things happening, and so I may have to juggle that around a little bit. It's kind of where we're at, and we're still on pace. So, if you have that done, which apparently none of you do, you can hand it in. Otherwise, uh, get it into me for Friday. Let's continue on. Oh well, there's now a marker in my video. Are we going again? I think we are. Hey, we're live again. Sorry about that little delay there. Um, I called this problems of volume, momentum, and energy. Hey, you know what? Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there a curvy path? Probably you're going to use energy for that section. Is there a collision or an explosion? Probably you're going to use momentum, conservation momentum for that section. And that's why I started that theme all those lessons ago to tell you what your approach is. So work energy concepts can be used together with other mechanics concepts to solve more complex problems, especially with momentum involved. Important points to keep in mind. We apply momentum conservation to collisions or explosions, to jeunes. We use energy to analyze, there should be no word or there, cross out the word or, to analyze pendulums and curved ramps. Hey, changes in the heights, changes in the speed. In fact, I should be more specific. You can, if there's a change in speed, still use momentum if it was a collision that caused that change in speed, right? So it's, is there a change in height and a curvy path? Definitely a job for energy. Is there a change in speed? Maybe a job for energy, maybe a job for momentum. Depends whether a collision caused it or not. A complex problem, I wrote, must be carefully broken down into steps. Example one, I like number one, I like number one, I like number one. I can't remember if it's on your test or not. It's somewhere, I think, and I just like it because it's cool. This is old school. It's called the ballistic pendulum. Ballistics, looking at guns and bullets. I think I alluded to this before Christmas. I don't know if you've ever asked yourself, until radar and computer timers were invented, how the heck did they figure out how fast bullets were traveling? Not like you can time it with a stopwatch. Human reaction time can't do that. What they would do is they would use this apparatus here. It's called the ballistic pendulum. What you would do is fire a bullet into a block. The block and the bullet would stick together. Hey, that's a collision. They would swing up. Hey, that's a change in height, conservation of energy. And if you knew how high the block went, you could work your way backwards and figure out how fast the bullet must have been traveling, because that's how much kinetic energy you had to begin with. We're going to actually do it front ways. 
we're actually going to say, if I know how fast the bullet is traveling, how high will the block go? But then once we have it set up, Petra, I'll show you how you can just walk your way backwards down the whole thing. And instead of finding H, if you know H, finding VI way back over here. Read along with me. It says this. Or look at the picture. Bullet hits the block. Okay, that's a collision. We're going to have to solve that section with momentum. That's going to be part one. Block moves off together. Hey, that's a change in height, change in speed. That's going to be conservation of energy. So I wrote, we have to recognize that there are actually two events, the collision and then the swing. In fact, you know what? How about we do that? There's a collision, the sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Okay. Oh, by the way, Sammy, I'm too eager to do this question. It says, find the height h. Find, we're going to try and find that. Should identify what we're trying to find. Hey, before the collision, what's moving? The bullet? The block, oh, you know what, since bullet and block both begin with B, I'll go mass one bullet, because it's the first one, mass two. So before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Just mass one? So I'm going to have momentum one initial. Bam! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? I think both swing up. Yeah, stuck together or separate? Stuck together. Fancy word for stuck together, just in case you see it in your vocabularies or something somewhere. Okay, it's an inelastic collision. Anyways, it's going to be momentum, both, final. Now, leading up to the collision, which is really this section right here, do you see any angles, or is it all in a nice straight line? I think it's all in a nice straight line, which means, you know what? <sighs> no dolp, no trig. I can actually just do this algebraically. I can actually just say, Oh, my next line, mass 1 V1 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2 V final. Whew. And I think, Alex, what I want to find is V final after the collision. I want to find how fast the bullet and the block start to move, swing up at. Is that okay? How would I get V final by itself? Sokotoa? No. Trig? No. Sine law? No. Coast law? No. Just divide. Oh. You mean one line? Oh. This used to seem so tough. This is like so nice now. This is almost fun, Mr. Duick. It's going to be mass 1 V initial all over mass 1 plus mass 2. It's going to be mass 1, which is the bullet. 20 grams, uh, grams. What's that in kilograms? 20 grams is what? 0 0.02. Its initial speed is 100 meters per second, which is probably a little low. That would be a one whole second to go across a football field. That, I think, I can almost follow that with my eyes. I think this bullet's trap. I, I think I made up some bad numbers, and I keep meaning to change it, and I keep forgetting to change it. But OK. In other words, I don't think this thing is going to swing up all that high. Maybe it will. Divided by mass 1 plus mass 2. What's mass 2? Oh, so how about 4.02? After the collision, what speed do they start to swing up at? Do 
You get point four nine seven five one two. I'll carry because this is not my final answer. Some extra sig figs. How about point four nine seven five? Is that right? Yeah. That's the first part of the analysis, the collision. After the collision, they start to move off together up a hill with a change in height. I think that's a job for conservation of energy. So I'm going to walk over here now, and I'm going to say, OK, the sum. No, not the sum, Mr. Duick. Energy. Good gosh, bad habit. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final plus heat this question mentioned heat or friction or work done by friction anywhere no okay so i say are any of these zero Oh, we're brushing cobwebs off, I know. Are any of these zero? Yeah. What? Oh, at the very top, it comes to a stop for a split second? Anything else? Yes. Why don't I, I can let the ground be wherever I want it to be. Why don't I put the ground at block level? I'm allowed to. So yeah, let's say uh, we're starting out at zero height. Alex, any Sokotoa in sight? Any sign law in oh, Any coastlines? Holy smokes. You mean this is just going to be a half m v initial squared equals m g h final? Are these m's the same? I better double check. At the bottom, it was the bullet inside at the, of the block. At the top, it's the bullet inside of the, yeah, you know what? These masses are the same. I just wanted to be cautious, Jordan, because there was multiple masses here. I don't want to think I can cancel when I can't. But in this case, I can. Hey, Sam, what did I say we were trying to find in this question? Oh, can you get H by itself, please? How would I get H by itself, kiddo? Yep. So I would get this. The final height is going to be v initial squared all over 2g. And what's v initial squared? 0.4975 squared all over 2 times 9.8. It's going to be Oh, I still have this on my calculator conveniently. Squared divided by 2 times 9.8. And I get, yeah, I didn't think this was going to be very high. 0 0.0126, uh, 0. I'm going to go like this. H final equals 0 0.0136 meters, which is only about 1.3 centimeters, which is not a good example. I kind of saw this coming as I was trying to crunch the numbers roughly in my head. <coughs> That'd be tough to measure, William, but let's suppose instead you got like 12 centimeters, I mean, more than more obvious. Here's my point. If instead of finding the height, suppose you knew the height, could you find the initial velocity from this equation? Why, yeah, it'd be 2 times g times height, square root. And if you knew the initial velocity, you would know that number. And if you knew the initial velocity at the beginning of the swing, which is the final velocity after the collision, if you knew v final, could you find v initial? Well, yeah, you would divide by the mass of the bullet. And now, race, you have how they found out the speeds of bullets back in the old days before they had the fancy fancy equipment, the ballistic pendulum. You'd weigh the bullet carefully, get the mass of that. You'd have the block weighed very, very carefully. And you could be, even with friction loss to the rope and friction deforming the wood and heat, you'd be pretty good. I bet you'd be within 10%, which 
probably would at least be able to identify what type of gun had fired the bullet if you were an RCMP or an FBI investigator 40 or 50 years ago. You know what, probably longer ago than that, 60 or 70 years ago. Yeah, now I'm sure it's all done with radar detectors and computer stuff and fancy schmancy stuff, but kind of cool, a little old school. Is that all right? So to me, this question is fair game forwards or backwards. Forwards, Neve, I can tell you the incoming speed of the bullet. Say, how high does it swing? Uh, backwards, I could tell you, how high does it swing? Can you please work your way along this in the opposite direction and figure out the incoming speed of the bullet? Example two. If mass one equals mass two equals mass three equals, you know what, if each mass is four kilograms and M1 has an initial velocity of 32 meters per second, Find the final speed of mass 3 if the height equals 0.82 meters. Okay. What's happening right here? Wham, they collide, collision. Let's remember that. That's going to be one thing we're going to have to analyze. Then I see a change in height. That's the second thing we have to analyze. Then I see wham, they collide. That's the third thing we have to analyze. You know what? I think we should divide our page into thirds. I think I'm going to go like this. Here's situation one. Here's situation two. And here, the collision, is situation three. Is that okay, Ashley? Okay. Now here's the nice thing. Look at the collisions. I think they're all in nice straight lines. No trig. No sign law. No coast law. It's just straight out. So this, although it looked ugly at first, might not be too bad. All right, let's look at situation one. The sum of all the momentum equals the sum of all the momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Momentum one initial. They collide after the collision. What's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? I think you'll have to read the both stuck together or separate. It says all collisions are hit and stick. So uh, momentum both final. I guess it's going to be M1 V1 equals M1 plus M2 V final. Yeah. Boy, after doing the stuff from yesterday, this is kind of like a refreshing dip in the pool. How would I get the V by itself? Straight divide. It's kind of nice. After the collision, the speed they move off at is that there. It's going to be, have I got room? Good, I do. V final is going to be, what's mass one? 4 and 32. 4, 32, all divided by 4 plus 4. Really, Cliff? Really? What's 4 plus 4 on the bottom? Eight. So it's 4 over 8 or 1 half. It's 32 divided by 2. Really? Calculator boy. In your head, what's 32 divided by 2? Uh-huh. No calculator required. You're in a slump, kiddo. <clears throat> Crutch, not stretcher. You lean on it. Don't make it carry all your weight, my friend. Situation two. Is situation two momentum? Is situation two conservation of momentum? 
yeah, a change in height, curvy path. You know what? I want to solve that using conservation of energy. So that's going to look like this. Ke initial plus Pe initial equals Ke final plus Pe final. Are any of these zero? Sadly, only that. It's starting out on the ground, but it ain't coming to a stop and it's ending up higher. What do I want to find? I'd like to know V final at the top. This is going to be a half M V initial squared equals a half M V final squared plus M G H. I think I can do this though, yes? And I think I'm going to do that other trick because I'm trying to get the V final by itself. We haven't done the, this is not a collision. This is right here at the top of the hill. No collision yet. If it was a collision, would I be using energies? No, what would I be using? Momentum, right? So the nice thing is, it's, yeah, it is the stuck together, it's mass one plus mass two right here, and still mass one plus mass two right here, and still mass one plus mass two right here. Yes, it's a good question, it's a good point. We, we, we do have to be careful with our masses here. Uh, and Cliff, I'm gonna do my other trick. I'm gonna go uh, times by two, times by two, times by two, because that's gonna go cancel and cancel. In fact, what I'm gonna get is this. VI squared equals VF squared plus 2GH. Is that okay? I guess VF is going to be VI squared minus 2G h and then square root that whole sucker. I guess vf is going to be 16 squared minus 2 times 9.8 times, how high did I say the hill was? 0.82. I think you can use your calculator on this one. Sixteen squared minus two times nine point eight times point eight two. What the? Oh, t square root. Do you get fifteen point four nine? No. Yeah. Fifteen point four fifteen point four nine meters per second. Now we move to situation three. Collision. You know what that's a job for, Cliff? Conservation of momentum. Right? You thought it right. You were thinking this. Uh, before the collision, what's moving? Mass one and two? Mass one, two, and three? Or all of them? I think just mass one and two stuck together. So I'm gonna go momentum one, two. I won't even call it initial, I'll just say momentum of one and two. Knock, knock. Bam, they collide. After the collision, what's moving? I think all of them stuck together. So you know what? William, I'll write it like that. Momentum all final. Because both sounds like two things. All sounds like more than two things. Is that okay, Kelly? So this is going to be M1 plus M2 V initial equals M1 plus M2 plus M3 V final. And you'll notice, Cliff, we drew this very carefully. The collision does not take place on the hill. No angles. It takes place nice flat level ground. We can go straight algebra here. 
we can say, hey, I think V final is going to be M1 plus M2 V initial all over M1 plus M2 plus M3. I think the final speed is going to be 8 M1 plus M2 times 15.49 all over 12 M1 plus M2 plus M3. Hey, Duick, if you're really good, do that one in your hand. Okay. Uh, 8 over 12, that's the same as 2 over 3. So it's going to be 15.49, which is going to be 30.5 divided by 3. Double check me, is it 10.8? 10 10.76? I, I could be off. What is it? 10.32. Ah! 10.34. Well, to three sig figs, I should have just said 10.3 and counted my losses there and gone to three sig figs and pretended smugly like I knew what I was doing. I sort of like that question. I don't know if I'll give you a three-section question, but you know what? Since everything is nice and linear race, sure, that's fair game. I'd probably go something like this. Two marks for that. Three marks for that because it was a bit more work, and two marks for that because the if linear momentum, the algebra really isn't that much. It's divide and we're good to go. I think I like example three. I like example three. I like example three. This is sort of the ballistic pendulum in disguise in that I'm saying, how high do they reach after the collision? Ah, but I don't think I told you how fast this well-drawn artistic roller coaster was traveling at the bottom of the hill here. You can tell the questions that I've made up on my tablet. Yeah, I know. This is the limit of my drawing. So a roller coaster with an initial velocity of 8.6 meters per second rolls down a track with a height of 18 meters. Cool. It strikes a second identical roller coaster. So they both weigh 250 kilograms. That has an initial velocity of 24. Oh, that second roller coaster is also moving. The coasters stick together and continue up the next hill. How high can the other roller coasters reach? Again, I think we have, count them, three sections. I think we have to the, you know what? Change colors, Mr. Duick. <clears throat> At the bottom of the hill, section one, before the collision, wham, they collide. How high do they go? Is that okay? Again, let's try dividing our page into thirds-ish. So we're going to go yoink. Yoink. Section one, section two, section three. Section one is top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Conservation of momentum or conservation of energy? Change in height, change in speed, no collision. So let's go like this. Kinetic initial, potential initial, kinetic final, potential final. Any of these, zero. Are we starting at rest? Oh, that would have been nice. Are we starting on the ground? No. Are we ending up at rest? No. Oh, hey, we're ending up on the ground. This is going to be... A half m v initial squared plus m g h initial equals a half m v final squared. Right? M cancels, which we said happens on roller coasters when we ignore friction. Oh, and I'm going to use that trick again, times by 2, times by 2, 
times by 2, because that's going to get rid of that. That's going to get rid of that. In fact, what I'm going to end up with is vi squared plus 2gh equals vf squared. In fact, instead of putting a squared here, I should just put a big square root over here. Vf equals big square root of uh, 8.6 squared plus 2, 9.8, 18. 8.6 squared plus 2, 9.8, 18 square root of that. Oh. Whoop, let's try that again. Square root of that, 20.6582. And is this my final answer? No, I'll carry a few extra sig figs. What did I say? 20.6582, 20.6582. 20 Two roller coasters walk into a bar. Wham! They collide. Collision, right? Section two, momentum. It's going to be before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Ooh, both. Stuck together or separate? Ooh, separate. Momentum one initial, momentum two initial. They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both. Stuck together or separate? Ah, this time, stuck together. Uh, by the way, Momentum, I'd have to be careful with vectors. I didn't do this, and I don't know if I ever would, but it would be interesting. I could have had this second roller coaster uh, moving to the left, coming in for a head-on collision, which would mean I'd have to include some kind of a negative velocity somewhere in my calculations. I didn't, but kind of cool. Um, oh. M V1 initial plus m v2 initial equals 2m v final. Mr. Duick, why didn't you go m1, m2? Oh, you said all the masses were the same in the question, didn't you, Mr. Duick? So you could just say m, m, and 2m instead of going m1 plus m2. Why'd you do that, Mr. Duick? Why did I do that? Why didn't I go m1, m2, and m1 plus m2? Turns out, in this case, by a fluke, but we'll take it, the mass cancels yet again. In fact, if I want to find the final velocity after the collision, how would I get the v final by itself? Just divide by 2. I'll take that. v final is going to be the initial velocity of car 1 the initial velocity of car 2 divided by 2. It's going to be 20.6582 plus, what was car 2? 2.4 divided by 2. All right, after the collision, they move off together at plus 2.4 divided by 2. You get 11.53. Uh, Heck, I'll even go 11.529 because it's a zero after the nine. 11.529 meters per second. Stage three. Yep. Conservation momentum or conservation of energy? What's my approach going to be? 
Really? Why? Change in height, curvy looking path. Okay, so uh, that's gonna look like this. KE initial, PE initial, KE final, PE final. Please God, are any of these zero? Are any of these zero? What? Oh, starting out on the ground, you say? Oh, we're coming to a stop for a brief second, you say. Oh, thank goodness. So this ends up being a half m v initial squared equals m g h final. Which m? I guess they're stuck together, mass of both, which means both those m's are the same, which means I can also go woohoo, woohoo. In fact, Brie, it says this. I can get the h by itself, finally. How would I get the h by itself, folks? Divide by g. The final height is v initial squared divided by 2g. I could have written a half vi squared over g, but just putting a 2 in the bottom is the same as multiplying by a half. It looks prettier. Which is going to be 11.529. Squared all over two and a nine point eight squared all over two times nine point eight. Ta da uh, six point seven eight meters. Now, that is a nice question, though, because it contains this whole unit in a nutshell, except angles. Could I give you one with angles? I don't think I will on your test, it, where collision was not in a nice straight line, because you could still find all the final velocities, and then the kinetic energy would be a half mv squared plus a half mv squared plus a half mv, however many pieces we're moving. Could be done. Ugh. Little overkill. Example three, a 100 kilogram fullback is running with a football at two meters per second. He's met head on and he sticks to a tackler. Which tackler is more likely to stop the fullback? A 200 kilogram lineman moving at one meter per second. I know 200 kilograms is really, really heavy, but I'm making up nice numbers. Or a 50 kilogram cornerback moving at four meters per second or both the same. And convince me. What do you think? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's the same. Why? How much momentum does the runner with the ball, the fullback, how much does he have? Uh, okay, so we could say this. Momentum of the fullback equals 200. So to bring him to a stop, the impulse has to be negative. I went really quickly, final minus initial, and I know I want my final to be zero in any tackle, and the initial is two. So he needs to lose that much. How much momentum does that 200 kilogram lineman have? How much momentum does the 50 kilogram cornerback have? Also, 200 kilogram. So you know what? They're both going to bring him to a stop. Now, which one's going to hurt more? Yep. Why? Because it has more kinetic energy. Ah, if we're talking about hurt, 
Now we're talking about having to absorb that energy, having your ribs feel a force times the distance, doing work on the rib cage, doing work on the skull, doing work on the jaw. Okay, that's an absorbing energy. So you're saying this, why? Well, if I go the kinetic energy of this guy, it's a half times 200 times one squared. Cliff, without a calculator in your head, could you go one half times 200 times one squared? 100. So he's got 100 joules of kinetic energy that he'd like to pass along to the runner. The kinetic energy of this guy is going to be a half times 50 times 4 squared. You know what? We might even be able to do this in our head. Hey, what's a 4 squared? 16. What's half of 16 Eight. times 500? Oh, times 50? That seemed a little big. Steroids, right? Um, sorry, 8 times 50? Approximately 4 times the hurt. If you watch football, Pretty consistently, the most spectacular collisions, the worst collisions, the most ferocious tacklers, are the free safeties because they're about 30 or 40 pounds heavier than the cornerbacks, but only a little bit slower. So they get almost all of the velocity of the cornerbacks, but they got some of that lineman mass too. Those are the ones that consistently seem to be able to level people out. Linebackers as well, but there's very few crazy fast linebackers out there, but there's lots of pretty fast big safeties out there if you watch football. I was going to number four. It's nerdily cool. Nah. You have an answer if you feel like trying something this tough. Okay? 377 meters per second. But I'm just going to write here. We're going to skip this. I'm not going to give you one this tough on your test. I was going to do example five. It's Nice and cool, but you guys are dying on me. So if you want to try it on your own, you can. The answer is 44.8. But based on how much of the homework seemed to be done from last lesson, it seems I should give you a fair bit of time to get some homework done today, too. So what's your homework, I think, number one? By the way, what's B asking me to find? They didn't give me a force or a di Oh, work is also change in potential plus change in kinetic. I don't think there's any change in potential. I'll bet you there is a change in kinetic. And I'll bet you it's negative. I bet you you lose some energy. I thought energy was concerned. The energy went into deforming the masses during the collision, probably. Uh, number two, ballistic pendulum. Three is good. Sure, four is good. Uh, five is good. By the, well, it says this, airbags inflate very quickly when a car collision occurs, but once inflated, they deflate just as quickly. Why? Why do you want the airbags to deflate? That's all about lengthening the time of collision. Yeah, because now you're, you keep moving forward for a little bit further, a little bit longer. Absolutely. If they did not deflate, well, I think I mentioned this to my physics 11s, and I don't know if I said this this year to you guys. How many of you have seen on a car commercial that wonderful high-speed, slow-motion airbag opening from the steering wheel? Bree, they will never show one at speed. Anybody had an airbag go off in front of them? It's far worse than getting punched in the face. They'll never show one on a car commercial at actual speed. It would terrify all of you. It's a, it, it, terrifying. It is not, I assure you, a gentle pillow-like substance opening up so that your face can, ah, cushion into, which is what it looks like in slow-mo, right? It is not that at all. You'll get a black eye and probably a broken nose, but it's better than dying. Okay, we just talked about number five, so you can skip it. Uh, 
Yeah, six is good because it's frictionless. I can use conservation of energy. Yeah, seven's a little overkill. Nine is good. Uh, ooh, 10 is yucky. Cool, but yucky. Ooh, 11 is nasty. It's a collision, but all three of the vectors they give you are at angles. So it's gonna be something before the collision, what's moving? Mass one and mass two, separate angle, angle. Wham, they collide, mass one, mass two. I'm not gonna go that much overkill. Although we can talk about number 12, is it easier to hit a home run off of a fast pitch or off of a slow pitch? Okay. We're basically done the unit. The only thing I want to look at are explosions and a few other weird examples.